at the outset i thank professor krishna reddy for inviting me to deliver a session in his webinar series very popular webinar series and thanks to him for his passion so he has been organizing for a quite a long time uh, disseminating the knowledge and arranging a platform for researchers to share and uh, researchers to learn as well so thanks a lot to professor krishna reddy so today i will be speaking on geo naturals for sustainable infrastructure and disaster risk reduction so this is the brief contents of my today's talk some definitions and some background then i will be touching upon a couple of topics and i will connect the dots relating all those topics to geo naturals and i will be presenting some case studies as well so coming to some of the definitions relating to today's topic sustainable the cambridge dictionary defines sustainability as the ability to continue at the same level of say happiness or performance over a period of time an infrastructure is basically the systems and services that a country or any organization uses in order to work effectively and climate change as all of us are aware it is the change in world's weather actually getting warmer as a result of human activity increasing the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so professor krishna reddy is an expert in sustainability aspects and in fact i was interesting to read some of the literature that this climate change induces several hazards like floods droughts wildfires then heat erratic distribution of rainfall and landslide and even earthquakes as well so all of you are aware of the 17 sustainable development goals envisaged by the united nations targeted to be achieved by the year 2030 and we are already in 2024 and only 6 to 7 years remaining so we are not sure whether we will achieve them or not but the efforts must be kept on and all of us know for civil engineers in general and geotechnical engineers in particular we can relate to all the 17 sustainable development goals and my research work basically focus on sdg 6 9 and 11 so as professor krishna reddy mentioned actually my phd was on earthquakes and my considerable amount of time in the past has been spent on researching on earthquakes and land earthquakes basically and recently i started working on landslides water geotechnics and sustainable infrastructure so actually i am making baby steps in the area of uh, say soil reinforcement and sustainable infrastructure so i will take just one or two minutes touching upon my background and how i landed in or how i got interest in the sustainable infrastructure so this is from my village pictures from my village so on left top you can see it is my father let me see if i can take the annotation button yeah fine yeah fine so you can see it's a green village and at the bottom you can see some of the water bodies in my village in fact if you tell my villager some of the elderly people even today that water bottle comes with a price they cannot believe some of the elders in my village even today if i tell them that water table we need to give cash and purchase they cannot believe because we are blessed with water open wells open ponds so much that even past 30 to 40 years the water level ground water level has not gone even an inch below and actually i left my village at the year when i was 10 years of age uh, for my higher studies and uh, most of you can relate actually if you are staying away from village you will be having lot of affinity so every day uh, we think of our native place so it was during covid lockdown time i got an opportunity to spend four months the longest stretch after uh, 1995 i got time to spend in my village so this is some this is how i was spending time so that was the time then these webinars also became popular and my first webinar was delivered from my village so due to internet connectivity issues i was going to my field and you can see 
some I, I was actually uh, making you no know, some coconut leaf mat actually and on the right side it was my first webinar which also came into the news so just to ask this is also a webinar i just uh, reminded about that and from my village actually uh, i got inspiration for my three patents that uh, uh, two i am holding and one is filed actually so i will touch upon those details in the coming slides and these are some of the books actually i have written uh, related to today's topic disaster risk reduction and sustainable communities for with net zero targets and geo cells so in today's presentation i will be taking some of the extracts from these books and couple of my journal papers and from some uh, some works from my collaborators so today's presentation i have organized like a, uh, such that the audience or the listeners will feel like reading a book so it contains some general technical information and uh, different topics i will be connecting the dots or i will be making a stitching as in geo naturals or the geo textiles i will be connecting different topics and especially the students can sense uh, the need to use the geo naturals in each of these applications well so all of us are aware of different hazards natural hazards man made hazards natural hazards like earthquakes floods tsunami etc and man made hazards like accidents war crimes etc so this is from go 2019 i have taken the exposure and vulnerability of the world cities to six natural hazards so as per this study it is the floods that affect the cities most followed by droughts cyclones earthquakes and landslides and there is a common term terminology that is wrongly used as natural disaster so the chengdu declaration of action in 2011 clearly states there is no such thing as natural disasters natural hazards become disasters due to human and societal vulnerability and exposure and it can be addressed with dc policies and disaster risk reduction is a no regret investment that protects lives and property again un says risk can be represented by four elements hazard exposure vulnerability and location and if i if we can eliminate any one of this we can avoid the risk completely it is equally applicable to any kind of disaster or any kind of risk if we can remove any one element from this be it hazard exposure location or vulnerability if we can take care of any one element we can avoid the risk completely and we have a lot of infrastructure development that happens so for example if it is an earthquake actually if an earthquake happens in greenland where there are no people there is no disaster so because there are no buildings and there is no disaster now we have a lot of infrastructure development that is happening on the earth and now i will take you very quickly in couple of minutes soil as a sustainable construction material that i have compiled from different sources and i will also highlight how geo naturals can add value to this so this is a natural arch in tirumala hills in india and this is the cave temples of himachal pradesh rock this is varaha cave temple tamil nadu kaneri caves maharashtra and badami cave temples ellora caves maharashtra is a must visit it was actually carved out of a single stone the top to bottom construction and different caves in different parts of india and this is the kallani dam the built by chola king perigalan and it is the fourth oldest dam which is still in use it was built in first century it was completely built using uneven stones to a length of 329 meters and it is still working i have recently visited as well and this is global vipassana pagoda so this is situated in mumbai uh, myself along with my colleague dr pavan uh, so we are doing a funded project with them so we are consultant to them actually actually they have not used any rcc or steel here it was completely built using masonry stones because it is designed to stay for 2000 years 
completely massive deconstruction. Similarly, the Ayodhya temple that has been opened recently also completely built using stones and rocks. So this is a 300 year old home from Kerala, my home state in India. And these are different types of mud houses. This is a mud gate. And we know the soil classification and basically clay soil or silty clays are used for this. And we are aware of the types of different types of earth buildings also, adobe brick building, rammed earth building, which can even give a very cozy look as well. And these are some of the rammed structures in and around India and cove houses and wet land doubt structure. Here we can see, see they are using timber. So it is like a collaboration between the mud, mud and timber. And because of these timber, actually it is acts, adds like an inclusion. So this is basically we are, we are aware of the soil reinforcement here. The mud is reinforced with the timbers and poured earth construction. And there are a lot of advantages for this, like low material cost, very simple to build. And above all, it is very environmentally friendly. Carbon footprint is very low or nil. And Laurie Baker, actually, he was an English architect and he was known for low cost housing using traditional techniques. He came to India in the year 1945 and he settled in Tiruvannandapuram. It is very near to my institute, actually. And he says, you cannot get more sustainable or renewable a resource than mud. Approximately 58% of all buildings in India are made of mud brick, some as many as 100 years old. I will add to this my ancestral home. It was completely built using laterite stone and mud. No cement was used and it was more than 300 years old. And it was very difficult to demolish that actually. It was so strong. And coming to disaster risk reduction, which is uh, part of today's topic. So here on the left side, you can see the Bhungas. There is a traditional house in the Kutch region of India. And they are resilient to earthquake forces. And in the 2001 Bhuj earthquake, a lot of these Bhungas survived the earthquake shock. And similarly, on the right side, you can see the Assam type houses in the northeastern states of India. They are made using wood-based materials. And they are, have also proven to withstand the earthquake forces. And the Koti Banal architecture of Uttarakhand and the Dhaji Dewari buildings, again in the Dhaji Dewari buildings, uh, or it is also locally known as track construction, you can see the timber inclusions. And actually, I got this slide from Professor Nanjun Rao. I recently attended his lecture. He is an expert in the masonry structure subjected to earthquake loading and it, caught my, it actually caught my attention. So this is from Latur earthquake, pictures from Latur earthquake after Latur earthquake of 1993 in Maharashtra. So you can see an out of plane collapse of a wall and on the right side a shock building's wall sustained the earthquake shock because of the inclusion. You can see the inclusion actually it's a basically timber inclusion. So it is able to take it because it is tensile in nature and so it is able to take the vibration. So here you can see the wonder is small inclusion. So we are aware of the horizontal shear band. So here a vertical inclusion has proven to withstand the earthquake forces. And this is again other parts of the world. And also the left side is the tack or uh, the Jidewari construction in Srinagar, Kashmir, India. And this is another example of our Turkey earthquake. Here also on the left side, you can see a timber-based masonry building. And on the right side, it was a new reinforced concrete building. You can see the timber-based masonry structure has withstood the earthquake because of those timber inclusion. This is again another few more construction from other parts of the world where they have given timber inclusion in the construction. And this is the ancient vibration isolation technique, Ramapa and Thousand Pillar temples in current Telangana state of India, where they have used sand lime, jaggery, etc. At the base of the building, they screen the vibration. Well, we all know about this 
one of the world wonders leaning tower of pisa and it is leaning because of the differential settlement that is also known to us and they have erected they have not erected it completely vertical uh, because uh, it has a uniqueness that it is a leaning tower so if it is erected that uniqueness will be lost because uh, they have maintained uh, some tilt and it is attracting tourists from across the world and it is a major source of economy is a tourist destination and a similar uh, structure in kashi varanasi india so it tilts by more than 9 degree actually much more than the leaning tower of pisa it is also again the same uh, reason because of say we can say big foundation or one side part of the soil was weak so if the same phenomenon happens to our house it does not it no longer becomes a tourist attraction but it becomes a disaster so this is also a disaster so it also highlights the importance of soil investigation recently i did a consultancy work for indian coast guard academy in mudra gujarat actually there one of the uh, watch tower has tilted so there we have suggested them to uh, use a jack and lift the structure and then do grouting and it costed them a couple of lakhs but if they have performed the actual soil investigation well before the construction effort time and cost could have been saved so this highlights the importance of geotechnical investigation and also ground improvement as well so this is another collapse during earthquake so here is a wonderful example and these pictures are available on the internet again showing the importance of a reinforce importance of the reinforcement concept so on the left side you can see the geogrid reinforced soil retaining wall and at the right side are a couple of a few houses and in the year 1995 there was a major earthquake in kobe japan and you can see all the fragile houses collapsed and the retaining wall is intact and this is not even a concrete retaining wall this is a simple soil wall reinforced with the geogrid so it proves that engineering intervention intervention can mitigate the disaster and in that aspect inclusion on or reinforcement can do miracles well so that is one part on the sum of the earth structures and how inclusions can add value to that and now coming to another say disaster drought or floods or let's say water security so i will take the example of india so india is a country of rivers we say ganga cha yamuna cha eva godavari saraswati narmada sindhu kaveri so many vast rivers and if i look at the past 100 years data here is the 100 years data and we have a average annual rainfall of about 1176 mm and the average annual rainfall has not changed but the rainfall distribution has become erratic and we have more than 6000 large dams india is the third largest dam building nation in the world after canada and china and we have more than 6000 large dams and 80% of them are earthen dams when we got independence in the year 1947 we had about 300 plus dams now we have 6000 large dams and 80% of them earthen dams and the storage capacity of all these 6000 dams together it is just 350 billion cubic meter and every year india receive 4000 billion cubic meter means 4000 km cube of water in the form of precipitation and additional 4000 bcm from neighboring country rivers like indus brahmaputra so total 4400 of bcm of water we are receiving and all 6000 large dams put together our storage is not even 10 percentage of that now if i look at the global precipitation map so from different sources i have taken so you can see the global map and india is highlighted in blue, blue color or green color indicating very high amount of precipitation and if i look at the water stress it is in red color so the reason is actually lack of storage so usually i say or we say india is not running out of water but water is running out of india so this is a slide from professor lingaraju uh, the director of uh, river rejuvenation institute so in the past we had lot of forest and uh, it enhanced the ground water recharge and now 
we have floods during rainy season and ground water is not recharged so there is high amount of runoff going as floods and in the summer we have droughts if i take the case of bangalore this is the topo sheet of bangalore of 1960 and we had 150 lakes in the city of bangalore in 1960s and now it has reduced to 60 and the current uh, majestic bus stand the main bus stand of bangalore city it was once a lake called dharmamuthi lake and we have a lot of water stress issues now again comes the importance of uh, geotechnical engineers i have recently introduced a new course water geotechnics in the pg curriculum of nitk suratkal because water through precipitation is first received by earth which either percolate into the ground water or run off into the surface water and we know uh, we have about only 2% of water is fresh water in the globe and even that uh, even in that fresh water a major portion is trapped in glaciers and maybe we have good amount of ground water and maybe less than 2% is our uh, surface waters no surface water bodies like lakes ponds rivers etc so india is not running out of water water is running out of india and this is applicable to the globe i have uh, talked uh, spoken to my colleagues in the association of coastal reservoir research from uk australia malaysia and they are all facing the same problem so it's a universal problem and now if we look at the hydro like engineering in ancient india starting from the indus valley civilization we had the great bath of mohenjodaro and kalani dam i have already explained the fourth oldest dam and i will take you couple of minutes to through india's traditional water harvesting structures this is my own pond uh, at my home so one uh, on the left it is during the rainy season and on the right it is uh, in the summer season this pond is also facing a problem of bank collapse and i will uh, show you very quickly that so these are ponds in kerala these are tankas in rajasthan they store drinking water here and anyway i will be sharing this slide with uh, professor reddy to share with all the participants and these are khadins or dhoras in western rajasthan where they create an earthen bund see everywhere uh, there is a role for geotechnical engineers and if the especially the students uh, focus clearly you can find the application of geosynthetics or geo naturals and each one of them can be taken up as an mtech project or even a phd project if the student can focus very dedicatedly so these are some of the traditional water harvesting structure and the only way for a sustainable water resource development is to revive these traditional water harvesting structure because the concept of dam cannot serve the purpose anymore that also i will speak to you in 2 minutes so these are step wells these are babadis in gujarat and rajasthan these are actually a place for gathering also and uh, people fetch water from here this is the uh, kankaria lake in gujarat so the uh, one of the largest bank in india state bank of india its logo comes from this lake ahar pines in bihar is a very beautiful concept when there is a flood the water is routed through the canals called pines and it recharges the ground water and finally what is stored in the ahar so this actually during flood water is diverted through long canals called pines and finally what is stored in ahars so this controls the floods and this rejuvenate recharges the ground water for use in summer and there is lot of application that is possible with the geo naturals to protect these pines in uh, a flood advisory committee actually commented that uh, the problem with the water shortage is because Uh, the negligence in conserving this ahar pine system and bengal inundation channels same here also we can have a lot of application of geo naturals bandaras in maharashtra cheruvu they are very popular in chitur and kadapa districts in andhra pradesh i have visited some uh, especially the gundur districts and all i have seen uh, and i have learned from the local people the ground water has gone so deep so we are extracting the ground water with the bore wells no it is like an exploitation of ground water sucking the water from uh, earth and it has uh, so reduced the ground water and the water level has gone so deep actually so these kinds of water bodies can recharge the ground water tanks karees or kalyanis in karnataka and sinks in ladakh where they store the uh, water from the melting snow surangas this is again in my place here in mangaluru and northern part of kerala these are they are horizontal wells because laterist uh, 
the in initial stage is very stable and we can drill horizontal wells and very pure drinking water and it is very similar to canets in arabian countries and these are some of the modern rainwater harvesting structures contours burns boulder check because i was involved in some of these uh, along with the dr lingaraju l uh, who is the um, director of river rejuvenation institute in bangalore and this is from ranchi and this is from uttarakashi and ranchi and another concept is groundwater dams with the sub surface dike you can store have water under the dam underground and on top you can have your houses everything so for this you can use either clay as a barrier or concrete as a barrier or even geosynthetics can be used as a barrier or uh, even uh, in uh, raichur and in uh, chakratirtha naimisharan in uttar pradesh jointly with uh, hindustan aeronautics limited and uh, river rejuvenation institute nitk we are proposing uh, geo cell encase with the clay barriers to act as the subsurface dikes that work is uh, going on we got the uh, sanction very recently so these are some, some examples of subsurface dike from tamil nadu so global dam construction has come down in the last 50 years that uh, after 2000 even many countries are decommissioning their dams so i have a one minute video i hope i hope the sound is audible otherwise please let me know yeah i, I need maybe just uh, 25 minutes more i will wind up yeah water the most precious resource on earth only 2.5% of world's water resource is fresh water and out of that only 1% is easily accessible remaining trapped in glaciers world receives about 1000 mm average annual rainfall and considerably large amount of fresh water from precipitation just flow into the sea mixing with salt water at one side large quantity of fresh water flow into the sea and other side people struggle to meet their water demands the erratic distribution of rainfall events in upstream catchments cannot be stored by land based reservoirs the issues associated with the land acquisition and displacement of people make it difficult to construct large dams on land the coastal reserve concept emerges as best alternative of fresh water storage The reservoir constructed at the mouth of the river in the sea can tap the fresh water during floods and allow the river water flow into the sea rest of the year. Coastal reservoirs can meet the water demands of nearby cities and also improve the coastal livelihoods. Civilization around the world developed at the locations with fresh water availability. A coastal reservoir has the potential to transform neglected and polluted coastal region to a sustainable green freshwater township self sufficient in energy through solar wind and wave energy let's save water let's save future international association for coastal reserve research thank you so this is actually marina barrage uh, completed in 2008 and they received uh, the un environmental award also marina bay and when we talk about coastal reservoir uh, even if in if you search in wikipedia or any document we hear about uh, uh, simangam in south korea or in netherlands or kim kayosha so actually there is a coastal reservoir already existing in the kutnad region that is uh, maybe only region where paddy cultivation happens below mean sea level it is very close to the arabian sea and there are three rivers feeding the bembanad lake and there is a barrage that was constructed in 1970s using just mud just again here also earth is the material just mud by local people to for their farming actually recently we have written an article appraising kanneer bukam bund as a coastal reservoir in puttanad uh, it was published in tiger and francis journal so this is a, a bird eye view of the kanirmukam bund it was renovated recently but earlier it was just a mud bund constructed by the local people in the year 1970s and uh, we have added the kanirmukam bund also 
uh, in the list of uh, coastal reservoirs. So again, the future is going to be for innovative concepts like coastal reservoirs where there is a lot of scope for geosynthetics to add value. And this is again from a pond in Kasargod district. You can see the how the bank has started collapsing. And this is again the pond at my own home, which I have shown you earlier. You can see on the side bank, it has collapsed actually, because during rainy season, actually it has started collapsing. And now we are going to use geo-natural. That is, you can see there are araca trees and coconut trees. We are using my two patented products only. We are planning to use that to protect that river bank. And this is a small case study done uh, in collaboration with the Center for Water Resource Development and Management, Government of Kerala. Uh, it's, its director, Dr. Manoj Samuel, is my collaborator. So Rangan Dittu Bird Sanctuary uh, had a big issue concerning to sustainability and environmental aspects. So you can see actually they, it hosts about uh, uh, 25 islets and it uh, hosts a lot of uh, more than 200 uh, bird species and uh, water otters, uh, crocodiles, etc. And it has a problem of flooding when the water from KRS dam is released. And currently, the islets are protected using the sandbags, no? so the plastic bags. The problem is, over a period of time, this microplastic gets diluted and it affects the ecosystem. More than 200 species uh, have made this uh, sanctuary as their home. So with the CWRDM. So I was a, a third party consultant for this project actually. Uh, along with my students, we have visited and this was installed a uh, few months back and it has survived one season. You can see actually Kaya geotextile mat that has been used to protect the islets. And uh, thanks to the Saurabh, the Deputy Commissioner of Forest, who has taken personal interest, you know, to make this happen. So here are the protection with Kokolai, Kokolo, geotextile and Kokolo. And here you can see the difference. On the left side, it is with the plastic. You can see once they degrade, know how they affect the environment. And on the right side, even if it degrades, there is no problem because these plastic bags also every three years they are putting new plastic bags to ensure stability. So here, same thing you can do every two years also. And in addition, you can see the vegetation is even coming through the chiral geotextile that has been laid, where that is not visible in the plastic bags. And we have similar collapse pro uh, problem everywhere. This was in from Bihar a couple of years back and the approach road has collapsed. This is the Kavalapara landslip that happened in the year 2019 in Kerala. And geo hazards, the, it can be earth hazards like earthquakes or shallow geo hazards like landslides and sinkholes like this. This was from Northeastern India. This is from Kodagu district that happened in 2018, very near to our institute. And 2011 earthquake triggered more than 2000 landslides. And uh, I have taken the case study of India because it is very diverse, spatio temporally, complex as well. And uh, this is the landslide vulnerability map. And here is an interesting observation as per the Geological Survey of India report. 59% of past seven years landslide happened in the state of Kerala. See, Kerala is a small state down south, actually. Kerala is a small state which is a less than 10% of the total area. And close to 60% of landslide happened in that small, small state. It is because of the erratic rainfall distribution that is happening. And here also this is a slope map, actually. Here also you can see. It is basically, the slope is a factor contributing and along with the, the external factors like rainfall and landslide. So uh, my PhD scholar Varun is working on a landslide alert system using IoT techniques and uh, some sensors in the soils and how we can alert. Here actually uh, we are using sensors as an extended census because uh, last year there was a landslide uh, uh, in our district, the Shinagana district in Karnataka. The previous evening people have alerted because they have seen the creep and they have seen the movement of trees and alerted the uh, house owners to vacate, but it was not vacated and early morning, the house was buried under mud. So our census nature gives signals, the tree movement was happening. So every time we cannot uh, sit and watch, that is why we are employing sensors. And here also, Geo Natural has a role to play. 
which i will show some slides well this is what uh, we are planning actually for the alert system and we have a langsled zoom in our laboratory where uh, our students are working on langsled early warning system without reinforcement and also with reinforcement with the sensors embedded and every the principle is basic soil mechanics principle that we are applying yeah these are some of the results of some experiment that we have conducted so here clearly it is visible how a landslide is triggering and the translational failure is also very clearly visible and we are able to note down the deformation using a camera yeah again coming back to the application of geonaturals to landslides so i have shown you this is a kavalapara landslide that buried 80 to 90 houses under the mud 80 to 90 houses buried under the mud and on the right side top picture you can see uh, the same picture zoomed in there are seven eight houses which were saved due to the vegetation cover and reinforcement from tree roots is a new thing it is non since ancient times and the plants like vetiver can go so deep that it can even uh, go beyond the failure surface as well not just the erosion control it can even prevent the landslide slopes failure as well and we have done some experiments using natural fibers like kayer sisal arecca etc and uh, here is a very quick result of a uh, fun element test actually unconfirmed compression test and we have seen that when we are using natural fibers it performs much 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 better compared to the synthetic fibers especially the kayer has proven to work best and here are the some of the scanning electron microscopic images you can see the fibers and the soil fiber interface and their interaction yeah here you can see the different fibers and the dense matrix that has been formed now coming to geosynthetics all of us are aware geo refer to earth and synthetics means man made or artificial and we are aware of different types of geosynthetics geo grids geo membrane geo nets geo textiles geo cells and also gabions pvd etc and they have vast areas of application land engineering coastal protection slow protection and also infrastructure development so as you can see in the picture also reinforced the soil walls with the concrete panels as well and they are very popular because of all these factors its lightness minimum volume non corrosiveness ease of construction speed of construction and very economical and environmentally friendly the textbook also says geosynthetics are environmentally friendly maybe we need to have a relocate it because the raw materials used are again polymeric material is actually monomers are combined and basically polymer material through the process of polymerizations and there is a carbon footprint involved and it is very highly durable after 100 years what next again what is going to happen to earth so why geosynthetics because of the ability to replace the natural resources like gravel sand clay etc and in some cases we can even replace the concrete and steel and it, it has very high durability and aesthetics as well as environmentally friendly we are believing so is everything about geosynthetics good maybe we need to introspect there comes the importance of geo naturals actually most of the geosynthetics are made from synthetic polymers and there is a terminology wrongly used in the literature as natural geosynthetics when it is synthetic we cannot call it natural so i have taken this terminology from uh, professor sanjay shukla's textbook which uh, talks about uh, geo naturals so especially geo textile is considered as one type of geo synthetics so geo textiles we can have from different natural materials like jute kayer etc it degrades over a period of time and for short term application it can be used with the vegetation cover and the need is basically for the to fulfill the short term requirements and considering the sustainability and environment friendliness of the natural geotextiles and it can be applied for road construction 
prefabricated vertical drains, erosion control, slope protection, etc. All basic functions of geotextiles are applicable for natural geotextiles also, be it uh, separation, filtration, drainage, or reinforcement. When a geotextile is used, especially in the uh, pavement layer, we can see the function of separation, which can be achieved using a natural geotextile as well. And if we look at the global geotextile market share, 47 percentage goes for road construction, where natural geotextile also has a good scope. So here is a study from my lab, where we have used Araka leaf sheet to make geogrids like this, and as well as geocells also, I will show that. So and here is the experimental test result. I will not go in much of the details. So we, in short, I can say that the Arakta leaf grids are performing as good as the commercially available geo grids in the form of planner grids when made using Arakta leaf sheet. And three-dimensional cellular confinement system, geo cell, it is becoming popular these days due to a lot of advantages. And it has a lot of applications in embankment foundation, roads, earth retaining walls, erosion control, etc. And it can be used for constructing retaining wall as well. So this is the picture that I have taken from uh, Bangalore airport. So I have walked around the airport and I have seen that to protect one lake, you now they have used uh, uh, geo cells. But again, still we can see some of the soil, you know, the infilled material has been washed away. So the mechanism of some of geo cell reinforcement is like this. When we uh, have a normal footing, the failure surface is developed like this, say in case of say general shear failure. And if we have a geo cell reinforcement, actually due to the lateral resistance effect, vertical dispersion effect, and membrane effect, actually the failure is confined and the bearing capacity can be increased three to four times. Three to four times increase in bearing capacity was observed. So these are the some of the properties using which we can characterize the geo cells. Basically, the mechanical property is tensile strength. And there has been a lot of work in the past 40 years on geo cell, especially on HDP geo cell. And there has been some work on natural material to make geo cells, especially uh, Dr. Amarnath Hegde has worked on bamboo geo cells. And my students have worked on Kair, Jude, Sisal, etc. This is uh, uh, Araka geo cell, which I have patented basically. This is uh, basically I told in this area of the southern parts of India and so, some other countries, including Malaysia, the, the Arakana trees are very popular. So we have conducted experiments, model plate load test basically, to understand the performance of the geo cells made from Araka leaf sheet and compared with the HDP geo cell. So here are the basic soil properties, which is also available in the papers that uh, Professor Reddy will be sharing with you. Coming to the results, so we have seen the Araka leaf sheath geo cells are performing at par or sometimes even better than the commercially available HDP geo cell. So he, the HDP geo cell per square meter costs about 1000 rupees if it is a 200 mm thickness. And Arka leaf sheath comes out free of cost. It's considered as agricultural waste. But only thing is the labor cost involved in making the cells. So this I have already shown you. So this is applicable to natural geo cells as well. And the basic mechanism is lateral support reaction, vertical stress distribution, and membrane action. So we have analyzed the uh, effect analytically as well for all these natural geo cells, Araka, Kaya, Jew, Sisal. We have performed the test, and uh, here is a paper that appeared in ASE International Journal of Geomechanics, where we have used the Kaya geo cell. And on the right side, actually, it was published in. Uh, uh, geosynthesis and ground engineering journal where we have used uh, sisal, jute, etc. And everywhere in short summary, I can say natural material geo cells are also performing as good as HDP geo cells or commercially available geo cells, and the bearing capacity increase in is three to four times. So here, coming to a retaining wall test model, retaining wall test. So this was done by an MTech student actually with the whatever available logistic minimum resources. I still remember that student's effort. He was so passionate because nothing was there and he has done everything from the scratch actually. He fabricated everything and the total cost involved was almost nil. 
he was only managing with the available resources so he has used hdp geo cells and kyr geo cells in a model uh, test tank and made a gravity retaining wall and compared the performance for loading even there was not a load cell available he has used uh, uh, some uh, construction blocks for loading and measured the vertical as well as uh, horizontal displacement when every new load is constructed and with the base plate he was able to calculate the pressure also uh, this got uh, published in uh, geotechnical and geological engineering journal of turinja so coming to the results under dry condition the hdp geo cell was performing better but kyr geo cell wall was performing far better than the under reinforced case and here are the results showing the horizontal and vertical settlement for for the vertical settlement the kyr and hdp geo cell the performance almost very same and uh, he has made some shower arrangement and uh, simulated the rainfall replicated the rain and very interestingly we observed that the kyr geo cell is performing better than the uh, commercially available hdp geo cell because the uh, kyr geo cell you no know, it uh, is drainage capacity is very high and another uh, student renuka yeah i will be concluding in 5 uh, to 10 minutes worked on coconut shell mat as cellular confinement this also we have patented so and uh, the beauty of coconut shell no one uh, local craftsman in uh, kerala told me that this coconut shell will never degrade i could not believe he was saying that it can stay even for 100 years and he has shown me some very ancient uh, uh, some uh, kind of kitchen utensils made of coconut shell now which is still maybe uh, 100 200 years old so i was not able to believe we have such a natural material which has high durability aspects so again it is yet to be uh, verified scientifically i have not done any test but this is from word of mouth and we don't know how it will behave when it is buried under earth but for sure more than 2 to 3 years it will stay because still during covid time i have done some experiment it is stay still staying in the slope is still stable at my home again uh, my student has done some experiment these are the basic uh, soil properties uh, which she has used and this is the properties of the hdp geo cell she has used and coconut shell in different orientations he she did the compressive strength test first and the failure pattern was analyzed and then under different orientation no coconut shell with the hole crown up because coconut shell no it has two parts one with the hole and one without hole and all uh, two types she has tried even with alternate arrangement also she has tried and again conducted a model uh, footing test different uh, types of uh, placing the coconut shell mat and the failure was failure behavior or deformation behavior was observed and here is the results so here also coconut shell mat performs so good much better than the hdp geo cell reinforced soil bed and it was found that circular shape performs better and this is the settlement versus eave and surface settlement and again she has repeated the one pattern no she has done the experiment twice and uh, very similar results she observed and similar test was done for clay soil as well it was published again in a springer journal recently this is the experimental setup and here also you can see the coconut shell mat is performing better than the hdp geo cell much better than the hdp hdp geo cells and she performed analytical studies also considering the dome shape of the uh, coconut shell etc uh, and analytically studied the lateral resistance dispersion effect etc and the analytical studies are close to experimental results but there are some deviation because this, she could not uh, uh, model the exact shape of the coconut shell because that comes with the uh, uh, undulations no different shapes so here is the comparison of the analytical and experimental results and uh, recently actually i have already shown you some work using kyr geo cell but that was hand stitched recently my uh, student uh, sandeep kumar he got the kyr geo cells actually industrially manufactured from the kyr board and uh, uh, tensile strength testing was performed and it has a very good tensile strength up to 16 kN per meter and again uh, model footing tests were performed and this is uh, has proven to be very uh, giving very good results 
and here is the results actually at uh, maybe effective depth is again as uh, known to all of us uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.33 times the width of the footing and it is performing so well and in another couple of minutes i will take you a quick tour of the currently ongoing project on uh, jute geocells so it's a project funded by national jute board ministry of textiles and uh, Birla jute mills, it's a more than 100 year old industry. They are our industry partner. And I have collaborating agencies, KHRI, STA, etc. Uh, there is basically PMGSV, NATK is the state technical agency. And the uh, motto was to make geocell industry any because we have seen when we make tire geocell, it is costing too much. When my student bought uh, tire geocell, it was costing too much because of the labor involvement, not for on the because of the material, because it has to be hand stitched. Now we visited Birla Jute Mills and we proposed to the National Jute Board. Uh, I have a collaborator from mechanical department that we can make a jute geocells mechanically me with the mechanical stitching. We studied the uh, principally same uh, stitching machine, you know, cloth stitching machine. We did a lot of trial studies, principle, we applied design thinking approaches, we followed a lot of ideation, uh, prototyping was done. And this is actually some videos from the jute mills. Actually, this is from the shopping bagging unit. They make uh, shopping bags, uh, and export maybe two to three crores in number to uh, uh, European countries. So they were saying more than the population of France, they export actually. And we even nowadays they want to shift their focus from the shopping bag and rice sacks business to infrastructure development. And that is where they approached us NATK. And with their shopping bag unit uh, mechanism of uh, uh, making the sheets, and existing stitching machine where they are. Uh, uh, stitching the rice sacks we did some customization so we did some customization to their existing machine and again i told you this is a hundred year old mill and they have very old machine but still working perfectly So these were the first trials we did. And finally, this is the product actually jute geocell product. So in Birla jute mills. So we can see Mr. Anu Pandey, who is the head of research and development at Birla jute mills. And this was made using 270 GSM. We have done with other GSM as well. Tensile strength tests were performed and this was not found sufficient. This tensile strength was, we say, 13. And the seam strength was very low because we used, they used a cotton yarn. Then we tried with the three ply jute yarn. And we did some model footing testing also on the same uh, jute geocells. And we found they are not satisfactory. You can see after the test now, uh, especially basically the problem is with the joints. Stitching is coming out. Then we again sent back and they have improved their stitching. And now the tensile strength is 40 kilo Newton per meter. Seam strength is also very good enough, up to 20 kN per meter. And again, we performed the model footing test. Here also the problem is with the joints, but uh, the performance is so good. Again, we are reworking on that. And there are some works again ongoing. We will be doing some uh, slope stability model footing test also. So this was the geocell jute, uh, geocell launch that happened in the uh, ministry's uh, conference in Delhi. And this was exhibited and the recent Bharat text, no, uh, Birla Jute Mills won a showcase product, uh, the Jute Geocell they have shown. And now it is their uh, Jute Geocell, now they are marketing and it is uh, gaining a lot of popularity thanks to Professor M.K. Dev, the consultant, uh, who is uh, helping us to reach out to many uh, uh, PWDs and thanks to Dr. Datta from Jute Board for propagating this and to border road organizations, etc. I, I have become a fan of Jude. The, basically, the reason is the absorption of CO2 and the emission of O2. Such a wonderful, sustainable material. 
and 80% of jute production happens in bengal delta 80% happens in bengal delta and this is the plant jute plant into fiber fabric and there are different types of jute geotextile and the uses are many in river bank protection road railway slope for road protection i will wind up showing some pictures only some pictures of some case studies where jute geotextile has been used and they serve all the purpose of separation and reinforcement and this is how it is laid jute geotextile can be laid on road uh, thanks to uh, dr mahadev datta the deputy director of national jute board for giving me some of this information there is a indian road congress design guidelines also available for jute geotextile we are going to make it for the geo cells as well so this is a case study from odisha you can see the laying of jute geotextiles and the finished road this another case study from tamil nadu you can see the finished road another case study from west bengal you can see how the port holes used to be there and the finished road after a couple of years another case study from raiganj west bengal another case study from uh, murshidabad you can see the condition of road before laying jgt and after laying jgt and uh, believe me i spoke to krrda karnataka rural development executive engineer and the contractor has certified that wherever they have used jute geo textile even after 7 years that road didn't require maintenance whereas all other roads need maintenance every 3 years minimum it can be used for bank protection as well these are some case studies where jute geo textile has been used for bank protection it can be used for railway also here is another case study where it has been used for railway track in controlling the settlement this is the completed railway track with the application of jute geo textile this is another slope actually where it has been reinforced with the jute geo textile this is a case study from uh, mangalore nantur actually it is near to national highway 66 in mangalore so mangalore city corporation approached me and uh, me and my students visited there were seven locations uh, it actually landslide happened in seven location in the year 2019 and they were using some sandbags and they want a sustainable design the thing is actually they were looking for a concrete wall design with the cost estimates was going too high then we i along with our students we visited did lot of investigation and suggested a hybrid reinforcement technique using a combination of soil nailing geo grades geo cell and also vetiver plantation because this is actually on, uh, adjacent to the highway so they cannot uh, stop traffic even for a minute so that is why they wanted to expand also that is why a kind of shoring protection kind of thing we have uh, suggested soil nailing first followed by geo grades and geo cells and it will uh, accelerate the drainage also so this is another case study near pumpwell circle mangaluru they have excavated the soil for bus stand construction and uh, a slope failure happened and on top of it was a building a house and uh, the authorities were warning those house owners to vacate and house owner that grandmother wa didn't want to vacate then we suggested a, a very sustainable low cost technique using soil nailing geo grids tire geo textiles vetiver and geo cell wall actually the problem is in especially in cities like uh, my tire two cities no it is very difficult to find contractors it is very difficult to convince the agencies to use geo grids because they are so they come in their letter they ask for concrete wall design they simply ask rcc retaining wall design they uh, maybe they do not interested about the uh, alternate materials but through our efforts actually indian naval academy has now included geo synthetics and geo naturals in their schedule of rates i will show that this is another case study from madikeri all india radio this is the indian naval academy is a 10000 acre campus adjacent to the sea coast there is a hill you can see some of the constructions and more than 60 landslides happen and this is everyday business for them after rains so we have suggested lot of rock fall protection method soil collapse protection method and also geo cell retaining wall to prevent uh, say any shock due to vibration because at the down side they have their main building so that is the asia's biggest naval academy and we have suggested combination of uh, geo cell geo grade vetiver plantation etc this is another case study from isprl it is indian strategic petroleum research limited there also 
uh, gabion walls along with the geotextiles and vitivere we have proposed and this is some a place where we cannot take even a, a single any risk cannot be taken because of its strategic uh, uh, importance and this is another case where um, uh, i have also visited and my students also have visited varun has visited and uh, is a tourist home actually the authorities have asked them to stop functioning because of a collapse landslide that happened and we they were simply they again they wrote to us for a concrete retaining wall design but we have suggested and we were able to convince them because they were private parties but it is uh, for government agencies the procedure is bit long so now they are going with the geocell wall design we have given some uh, revisions also and this is another project actually in the netravati river bank there also they simply asked for concrete retaining wall because government allocated uh, funds for the same but we have suggested an alternative like this using geogrids and geocells because there is a wave action there throughout the river and there is a temple which gets flooded and the river is eating the uh, land actually so we have given them both because they were uh, they want the rcc retaining wall we have given them that and this also we have given out of uh, without any charge out of our gesture well this is another major work that we are doing i told 80% of dams in, in india are earthen dams so ukka is an earthen dam it's a 4 km earthen bund and 900 800 meter is a masonry section so it's a very old dam so uh, myself and dr pavan we are doing this dynamic stability analysis of the dam and after the analysis if needed we will be suggesting further reinforcement method now brief conclusions anyway i will not read out to be, make it very quick alternative materials especially the natural materials we need to focus on that we have to make our shift there is a need to make a shift from polymer based methods materials to natural materials wherever there is a possibility it is our duty as well as responsibility especially in terms of environment uh, environmental friendliness and sustainability aspects we should think of 100 years from now 100 years from now because another project i am doing no it is for the bhandardara dam which was built in 1920s more than 100 years old so now we should think of 100 years from now for whatever activities we are doing if you are burying uh, polymer materials into the land we should think of what is going to it has lot of ml friendly aspect and it is very popular we should think if we can replace them with the natural material wherever there is a possibility especially for slope protection erosion control etc we should go for that and geocell lot of research has been done and recently it has uh, become popular also natural geocells yeah it has to become popular bamboo kaya jute they are very promising materials and to be short ecosystem based disaster risk reduction is the way for sustainable development and that is the future brief acknowledgement i would like to acknowledge all the funding agencies and all my clients and all the students there are few more uh, students actually i have listed some students who had direct contribution to today's presentation there are so many other students who had contributed indirectly and thanks to collaborators and once again thanks to professor krishna reddy for hosting this uh, webinar and giving me an opportunity and i welcome all of you to my institute nidk maybe the only institute in the country which can host of its own beach or a beach uh, located very close to you will enjoy the green campus welcome whenever you are coming to india please make a, uh, please try to make a visit to my institute thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much uh, professor